You're listening to the Marginally Geeky Show, the Epically Geeky Book Club. Greetings and welcome to Marginally Geeky. I'm your host for the evening, Eugene Stevens. Uh, tonight, I am joined by Jennifer Hetzel and Chris and Ray Andrew. How are y'all doing? Good. Excellent. Great. Uh, what we, our last, it's been a little while since we've done our last show. How's everyone been? Uh, um, exhausted. You guys have been in like Europe and stuff. I, yeah, I know, right? A lot, a lot happened. Yeah. <laughs> Good and bad. So it was it's a, been a lot. It's been a roller coaster of life. Yes. Wow. I, absolutely. I can I can one hundred percent attest to that, both uh, there and here. So yeah. <laughs> which is why, if you listen to the last episode that we we posted, um, which was the preview of of the new show, um, uh, pro, uh, Procrastinators, um, I, I was serious. You know, there's I, unfortunately. And I've had this happen lots of different times. You know, I've noticed a podcast, you know, will start to not be on as often. And then the next thing you know, it's just gone and there's no word. And it's like, well, could have at least said goodbye. But, uh, <laughs> we um, but no, we're, <laughs> yeah, we're not, we're not doing that. It's just, it's been a rough spot and it's, yeah. you know, uh, you know, we don't make money from this. We do this just for fun and to hang out. So, you know, if, if, you know, we have to move the schedule around a little bit, hopefully you understand. So. Um, and if you don't, or if you do either way, drop us a line, we'd love to hear from you. So I know, I know people are downloading the show and listening to it because I've seen the information. <laughs> I know y'all are out there. We'd love to hear from you. Yes, please. Uh, yes. Um, especially well, opinions or questions or anything like that. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Or book recommendations. We'd love yeah. to get oh, book yes. recommendations yeah. as well. So, um, well, this month's or last month's or whatever, the book that we're, we're talking about <laughs> now is um, this is the uh, second series that we're reading from the author Dennis E. Taylor, um, and it's called Outland. Um, if you pay attention to the very beginning of the book, um, it is only available through Audible right now. Uh, I think the print version is coming out here pretty quick, um, or it just hit. Anyway, um, it is. Uh, it's his second series that he's he started writing, and uh, it is the is what he put it book one of the um something worlds yeah. oh look some anyway it um it, it, this is going to be another series so uh, and not to give anything Thank away God because the way it ended geez. yeah the way that it ended is obvious <laughs> this is not the last book because if it did this would automatically this would be a suck <laughs> so. <laughs> Um, yeah, Quantum sorry. Earth, Quantum Earth series is what he there calls it. Go. There you go. Okay, see, I I could rem- I just had to <laughs> bring it up my brain. So, um, we're a little rusty. Yeah, a little bit rusty. <laughs> uh, well, let's go ahead and go around real quick. Just uh, just your quick, like, what did you think of the book? Right. Oh, I can't wait for the next one. Like, I, I need the next one now. <laughs> so you obviously I, enjoyed it. I listened to it. And uh, I tried to get Chris excited about it, and the first attempt wasn't very good because I think we went from like the Baba verse right to this book. No, it was or, we were listening to um, like Scott Meyer stuff, like the authorities, and then we write. It was like right. a lot of the same. So, we, so we went from one to another, and she's like, "No, I, I just need a break from audiobooks for a minute." Yeah. So, so <laughs> uh, I think it was like a month later. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I'd listened to it twice, and I said. Let's just <laughs> try it. She's like, oh, fine. We start at the beginning. <laughs> so we start at the beginning and about three chapters in, she's like, okay, I, I can keep listening to this. I get and it. Then, and then a couple of chapters after that, she's like, damn it, I'm in it now. <laughs> yeah, Ray was pushing this book for a long time. He would just like randomly mention it in oh, conversations. And then when I visited, they... We're like, oh, let's listen to it. Let's start it. And I was like, okay, that yeah, that sounds like a cool book. So mm-hmm. I'm glad we finished it because yeah. who knows how, how long it would have taken to finish it. <laughs> I'm glad you started it up here. Yes. I know, right? I, yeah. I loved it. I thought it was great. It's one of my favorite books. Really? Yeah, yeah. I love it. Uh, yeah. Um, and looking into it a little bit more, Dennis e. Taylor is a Canadian author. Yes, he is. <laughs> uh, and Outland was self-published in 2015, and then oh, wow. it 
went, uh, then it got pulled, and then now he's redoing it again. And with another, at least that's what Wikipedia said. I could be wrong. But I I just, I love the whole idea of it. And I think it was because we were listening to a lot of science fiction, and maybe that's why, and I did want to listen to another science fiction thing. I think thing, so, and yeah. I was like, No more, I can't right now. <laughs> but it's not. It's not really, it's like science fiction for somebody who's not really into it. Yeah. Like, it's like a gateway drug. It, it's like a, science fiction. It, it's a realistic look of science fiction. Yeah. Which I like. And Quinn wanted to say something. He's in bed right now, but he loved it. Yes. Absolutely <laughs> loved it. Nice. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. He's 11, yeah, so he, he, he thought it was fantastic. He had a few, like, all out giggle fits at oh, some yeah. parts oh, yeah. of it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Usually when they swear, he thinks yes, it's pretty he funny. he thinks it's great. <laughs> Which the book starts right off like that. Yeah. So yes. Yeah. yes, it does. It's lots of swearing. <laughs> Well, you know, a lot of good books actually start off that way. I mean, The Martian literally started, well, I'm fucked. Yeah. So, yes. And then, again, one of my favorite books. Yeah. So. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so you liked it as well, Jennifer? Yeah, I really liked it. Um, I, like I said, started listening to it in Canada. And it was like our background noise for the three or four hour ride to Toronto, how, mm-hmm. however long it was, <laughs> and yeah. a few other trips. Yeah. So... Yeah, it was great. Um, and we, I guess we probably got like halfway through it before I left. And I intended to finish it at some point. But like I said, this prompted me. The only thing, I wasn't crazy about some of the character voices he did. But, you know, I really liked the story. So, Well, let's bring up the character voices. Uh, this is uh, by Dennis C. Taylor. He did write the Bobbleverse books. Uh, and just like with that series, it was uh, narrated by uh, Ray Porter. So uh, you do get some bleed over of some of the um, Bobbleverse voice uh, stuff, but there are a lot more females in this book. Uh, so we do get a lot more female uh, vocalization. Um, so let's let's go ahead and get started. Also, just to jump in, yes, I, I as soon as I saw that he had written another book, I was like, yep, I enjoy the Bobbleverse books. I'm going to give this a shot and fell in love with it immediately. I love this. I can try to remember how I refer to it. it's it's sci-fi, uh, not property. What am I thinking of? Um, resource management is what it is. It's sci-fi resource management, and I love that. And for whatever reason, it's perfect to listen to in the background while I'm trying to work because I'm constantly trying to figure out you know what order I need to get stuff done, and seeing that other people have this thought process for it it helps me. And yeah, I I adored this book, so. Um, the, uh, the, the basic, uh, the elevator pitch for the book is a, um, a couple of college kids, um, figure out how to create a, well, what they think is a portal to a different version of earth. And they end up pulling in several other, uh, college kids to help them out. And as they're exploring this other earth, uh, Yellowstone goes nuclear and it is literally the end of the world. Um, the, uh, but the explosions... version of Earth that they go to isn't like ours. It's like completely right. different because it's an unaltered, like, what what era was it? Like, uh, it was what, basically I, so... Plasticine uh, or plastic, something yeah. like that. Yeah. So it was basically, yeah, so the first Earth they open up is basically like a hellscape. And of course they're like, oh, well, yeah. we're not going back there. And then so the second one they open up is... Basically, uh, Yellowstone blew up there, but at a much earlier time, and it caused humanity to die out, but all of the plastine animals survived. So you still have giant sloths, you have um, giant, beavers. Saber- giant beavers, saber-toothed cats. These animals are still American. in existence and running American. around yeah. North America. Um, and so anyway, no dinosaurs. No dinosaurs, no. Um and so they are, uh, th- the book chronicles them trying to then figure out how to go back to the university, collect as many people as they can, and basically figure out where they're going to go. Are they going to try to save more people from our Earth? Are they just going to set up shop in this alternate uh, world, which they're now referring to as Outland? So where we get the title of the book. Um, all right, so let's talk about some of the characters. There are six main characters and then we have some 
other insular characters that pull in. Uh, and I want to start by talking about the, the six main characters because they all are have their own personality. They are very strong characters. Um, let's start with Richard. So um, <laughs> Richard's a bit of a dick. Mm-hmm. Um, he's very kind of headstrong. In fact, they, he flat out does not like one of the other characters. And the fact that he calls on him in the beginning of the book saying, hey, we have this thing that we're really, really interested in. Uh, we want you to come take a look at it is one of the things that's like, wow, if if he's willing to lay down the hate and 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 bring me in on this, this must be something really interesting. So um, what did y'all think of Richard? He was written well to like, he's one of those guys that, uh, yeah, I wouldn't like him, but damn it. You, re- you got to respect him, right? Like he's, he's smart enough and he knows what he's talking about. I just don't like the way he brings it up. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I ended up really liking Richard. I liked like, him too. Did you? Yeah. I, I wasn't that fond of I him. I kind of did. Yeah. Over time, I'm just like. Yeah, I could kind of see filling, fitting into this role, just kind of being. I love the fact that it's just like I quit. Yeah. Oh, they, they all start doing that. Yeah. I love it. And I'll, yeah, get in line. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yes, no. that, that's that's one of the running jokes is the fact that you know when shit just keeps piling on, it's like no, I'm done. I'm done yeah. with this shit. I quit. So yeah, and don't get me wrong, I uh, I think he reminds me of a, of a buddy of mine, and that's why, uh, <laughs> yeah. He's a friend, but it's like, damn it, I just hate the way that he's, oh, yeah, you're right, but. Yeah. The delivery's not so great. Yeah, the delivery's like, just, yeah. Pretty yeah. sure I've dated a few Richards in my day. <laughs> you know? So, it's like, I like them, but yeah, I'm kind of like, damn it. Yeah. <laughs> Why do you have to be right or, you know, yeah. know this shit? Exactly, whatever. yeah. <laughs> Um, let's move on to Kevin. So Richard and Kevin are the two that initially start this project and bring everyone else on. Um, Kevin is just very reserved. Mm -hmm. We don't hear a lot from Kevin. He's obviously, he doesn't do guns at all. Mm -hmm. Um, he's very, I don't want to say stereotypical, but he's very, he's very much that bookish. I'm here to, I'm here to do science and Mm -hmm. that's it. Fuck everything else. Yeah, he's. So. <clears throat> but don't they say like he's he's so smart that even like he's he's, he's so far beyond. Level. He's on yeah. another level. That's true. Yes, and so he when you're, probably is somewhere on the autistic range at some yeah. point. So when at you're least that smart. Yeah. You you I, I would think that it would hanging around average people would be pretty annoying, annoying because you you would look at yeah. them like they were just idiots. But I think it all, I, and I, I love it whenever he does catch something, and the characters even say it about that, like you know the the two stoners, and he's like, "Where are the stoners?" And they're like, "Oh, even Kevin's figured out who these guys are." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, I also like when he defends himself by by like, "Yeah, uh, we just happened to make a gate that worked by on my math, and I was mistaken by it." So yeah, yeah. <laughs> just by a fluke, my math worked. Yeah. Um, so let's move on. So one of the first guys that they bring in here is uh, Bill. Bill is obsessed with pop culture. Uh, and he's also obsessed with coffee. Bill would be on this podcast. <laughs> yes. Oh, hell yeah. Bill would be on this podcast. <laughs> yep. Uh, Bill and I would be hanging out like, it, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I, I love Bill. Like it's, you know, he's the hardware guy. It, you know, he's the, he's the engineer of the group. Um, it, if I were part of this group that I would end up being the bill. So it's just, he, he's always figuring, he's even figuring stuff out that they don't even ask for, like getting satellite TV to work on Outland. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, Hey, can I check into it? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll do, I'll do that. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I like, I really liked bill. And I also liked Matt. I, in fact, I'll go ahead and just say this. I did end up liking all six of the main characters. Mm-hmm. Um, Matt's his best friend. Um, he's the software guy that they initially pull in. He's dating one of the other characters, uh, Aaron. Uh, he, he's also, um, Bill's best friend and he's really laid back. He ends up becoming like head of the scavengers. Like he's whenever, whenever, you know, everything goes down, he's the one that, you know, starts leading up that group and it's just constantly hammered by, uh, uh, that's you. 
Yeah, I, I, yeah, I could see that. You you would be the one that would be like, "All right, let's let's go look and see what we can find." So, I quit. <laughs> yeah, I quit. get in line. <laughs> um, <laughs> then we have Aaron. She's the geologist. She's dating yeah. Bill. Um, she's also the last of the six characters' best friend, Monica. Um, she's very down to earth, and I love the fact that like she's the she's the the one that knows. Uh, the most about what has probably happened mm-hmm. uh, being a geology student. Um, like, I, I, I don't know what else to say. I, I really like all six of these characters and I yeah. think they were really well formed. My, so. my favorite intro is Monica's. Oh, <laughs> hell yes. That's my hell yes. favorite intro. <laughs> um, so, so Monica is the sixth person that they bring into the group. She's a zoologist. That's why they bring her in. Um, She's very strong willed, <laughs> to put it lightly. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> that's I'll a way be, to put it. Yeah, that's a way to put it. I'll be very honest with you. I might have what I would refer to as a book crush on Monica. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it, Bill. Here, here's the thing. Okay, here's the the guns, not so much. Like, she yeah. is a g- gun She's maniac. Gun nut. Yes. Yeah. But curvy brunette who is strong willed and has a sassy mouth and is willing to like fucking stand up for her friends. That's hot as shit. Sorry. (laughs) See, I like her, but I also just found her a little annoying. Know it all. She was probably my least favorite for those reasons. I Mm -hmm. really did like her kind of no bullshit. I'm going to take care of business attitude. So, and and some of that may have had to do with his, voice for her because i i don't know i tend like when guys do girls voices i find that i sort of don't care for it (laughs) it's that's (laughs) a a tough thing for sure in these audiobooks yeah yeah sorry guys i can understand that it's hard to do i I see uh, and i yeah i appreciated what did what he did with it at least and the way like you got her attitude immediately like as soon as he as soon as monica was talking it's like oh that's Monica. My kids. <laughs> yeah. That scene where um, she's basically, you know, they, the the um, she set up the trap for the, the the two crooks that they've pulled over, and you know they've got the two people, and she's just like she's killed the one guy, and she's just walking down the street like reload, shoot oh, the yeah. guy, reload, shoot, and just is pissed off because you know he's he's hurt yeah. her best friend. I'm just like fucking a dude. That is awesome. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's scary. That's scary. That's the scene mm-hmm. we've talked about. Some yeah. of these books where you know you want to see it as a a movie or TV version. That's the scene I want to see, is her walking down the street with some of the you know some of the ash still blowing, just fucking picking this guy off. You know, yeah. piece by piece. There's so. two other scenes that I I want, and I'm sure we'll talk about one a little bit later. Okay, bring it up. Well, no, no. So the one is uh, is uh, the saber tooth coming through the gate. Yeah, that was mine too. <gasps> yes. Oh yeah. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> the very first scene. Mm-hmm. So, so that one for sure. <clears throat> the other one is uh, is the coffee coming through the portal to Bill. Yes. <laughs> and he's like, "Yep, okay." And the, the the look on the surgeon's face or whoever, whatever the guy is, uh, you know, here, let's have some real coffee. And he's like, "Where the." F- fuck did that come from like yes I, I i would love to see them bring this that that okay so in the book they create this technology that allows the, them to, to travel back and forth and it's basically like a gate mm-hmm. and it's it whenever they open it up um on the other side it's literally just like it, it's just it, it's just like a rectangle that's there and there's no depth to it or whatever and he plays it's around screen, with that yeah. Exactly. And he plays around with that idea really well. Yeah. So there's a scene where they're trying to uh, contact the National Guard and their first conversation with them didn't go so well. And, you know, the National Guard's not having it and they keep telling him, you know, get down or whatever. And Bill's just like, they're not getting it. So the two other guys that are holding the gate literally just kind of like drop it down on him. And like the other guy who was saying, he was like, it's like someone just erased him from reality, starting <laughs> with the head going down and and then during that scene, uh, or later on, there's a standoff scene where um, he takes it and they they drop it over the one guy's head. And so, like, to everyone else, it looks like his head is just gone. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then his head is in another, basically another dimension. And they, like, yeah. you know, shine a light in his eye and punch him out. <laughs> so 
Um, but yeah, he plays around with the idea of how the gates work and, and all that other stuff um, an awful lot. Um, which is one of the reasons I, I, I love this book because uh, he does play with that idea. It's not just, oh, hey, there's a stationary gate and it's here and yeah. you walk through it and you walk back. And he does a lot of different things with it. But um, it, I also like that it works with the probability, right? Because when the saber tooth disappears, instead of his head, you know, the head gets cut off when they shut the gate. Right. He's like, well, no, he was probably here. Like the, the way that it works is the probability is, is that the tiger was still more probably at the other spot than he was here. So that's why he didn't come through the whole way. So he didn't lose its head. It just didn't exist here completely at the time. Right. So, I like that. Was... I did too. And I'm glad that he explained that, that rule to yeah. his, you know what I'm saying? So, um, so let me ask you all this. Uh, you're in college, you're doing your thing. And this group, stumbles upon this and comes to you and for whatever reason they need you to be in would you join them yes oh hell yeah <laughs> <laughs> not even a question huh? no so the reason why yeah. i think I like this book so much is because i went to a natural resource college so i did geology and mapping and drilling and blasting and all that stuff so it's very the university of nebraska feels very much like my college that i went to so i could I, I relate a lot to Aaron. So yeah, if they came up and were like, guess what? And I'm be like, yes, please. Yeah. <laughs> Just the same as if doctor, if the doctor showed up and said, do you want to hop in my TARDIS? Be like, yes, please. Yep. <laughs> what about you? Bye Ray? kids. Yeah. Yes, you. Eat a good life. <laughs> Check you later. Well, yeah, like, back in college, no questions asked. I'd be yeah, down. absolutely. Now it'd be like, let me describe the kids. Exactly. <laughs> yep. <laughs> But uh, yeah, back in college, pff, oh, yeah. no questions asked. Yep. Okay, when are we doing this? <laughs> Especially if uh, would it would it would it be more so the fact that you are getting to explore another dimension, mm -hmm. or is the call of the money uh, really interesting? Um... <laughs> For me, it's the it's the dimension. It's yeah. What? How different is this other spot? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are there humans? Because they haven't proven that there isn't, right? So they, True. They, they've just said that they don't exist in North America. Okay, so what happened to that? And take a look at that. And then, again, the, like the end of the book, all right, what if we point it away again? And <laughs> where else can we go, right? Like how, yes. many, how many gates can we open and where does this all lead? That's, that's bigger for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What about you, Jen? Yeah, I would have done it in college but but here's my thing like i just kept thinking the whole book how it is folks are this much of actual experts in these fields because when i went to college i'm going to tell you right now i did not, not retain that shit the way that they seem to be retaining it and i did like okay i had a liberal arts degree it's a lot different but you know if you would have come to me and said let's go back in time and and, you know, you know the history of this place because you're a history major. I would have been that useful. You know what I mean? Like, even if I was studying science, I don't know. I don't have the faith <laughs> in my abilities or knowing other college students, their abilities to actually know this shit well enough. But then again, maybe they're close enough to it that they remember it. I'm just that that was the part that was a little hard for me to accept. Like, come on, you guys there really know this. You're that professional. <laughs> <laughs> They're still in it. They're, it's easier to yeah. remember. They're still yeah. in it. Yeah, yeah. Let me tell yeah. you, I was a hell of a lot better um, so, uh, being able to at soldering whenever I was in college than I am now. Like, I lost that information and had to, like, kind of relearn it. And I'm just like, damn it, why? I was so good at this. I used to know all this shit. <laughs> like, I used to be able to if pick I... up resistors and look at it and go, oh, that's a 10 ohm, you know, 10 ohm resistor or whatever. And now I'm just like, what do these fucking colors mean? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> It may also be because I had the non-traditional college. Like I did it later in life and I didn't go straight through after high school. Uh -huh. So, you know, my, my headspace may have been different and I would have retained it more. I don't know. But anyways, that, that was my thing. I was like, what are the odds that these folks, and the, the other thing is that they're all, they all just happen to be people that are in the right fields for that, you know, you know like, Oh, we have an engineer and we have a zoologist and a geologist. How, convenient well, well I mean, they, they recruited that way 
I know, but you know how I am. I just can't I have to, you know, dissect everything. So that being said, right, uh, when when you're at a college, those opportunities do present themselves even more, though, right? Like, you would know the guy that, like, if you're in a science class of some sort, you're going to have a buddy that was in a similar science course but slightly different. So that's why Matt and Bill would get, get along, right? And then um, Richard's an engineer as well, isn't he? Physicist. Physicist, Physicist. Yeah. okay. So... Yeah. They probably had some classes together with Bill or something like that, or you know, they so there there would be enough crossover that you, mm -hmm. you would know of people. Well, yeah, and if your roommates in college, like I had a oh, roommate yeah, roommates. who was That's the other thing. There was, so there was me who did parks and forest, and then my roommate was a forestry student, and then my other roommate was a cartography student. Yeah. So. So you'd get different. Pockets. Although I am with you, I don't think I would have been able. The recall wouldn't have come like that, and I wouldn't have had that vast I, knowledge. I think you would have got over there and started inspecting the leaves of the trees and said, "This is a <laughs> different type of maple than what we have over there because these maples don't exist anymore. So this is weird." <laughs> oh, I do. Yeah. I yeah, did that you would have. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, if they're actively number one, if you're actively doing it, then it's going to be fresher in your mind because yeah. they are actively college students. But also, number two, like you said, it's that rarity or it's that, uh, in this case, danger. In some case, mm -hmm. it's like, you know, hey, I literally almost had my head bit off by a smilodon. You know, that part of my brain is going to fire up and be like, that's a that, and that's a that, and that's yeah. a that. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> Let yeah. me figure out what's not going to kill me. Yes. So, um, all right. So if you were, um, would you have explored or would you have turned this over to the authorities? Uh, oh, I'm exploring it because authorities are going to take it away. I, that's my, that's exactly, <laughs> I, that, I think that's one of the reasons I like the book so much. Cause I would have been like, yeah, we probably should turn this over eventually but let's go yeah, let's see what's out there first yeah. yes yeah. i want to see what's going on first i yes. want to get my yeah. my fill of this before yes. it goes away because it will go away yeah exactly that yes. would be my approach yeah yeah i have a feeling that 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 date that turnover date would just kind of keep sliding back mm -hmm. a little bit so yes yeah. they did see, say I'll... they intended to at some point mm -hmm. exactly yeah i don't want to see how long we could get away with it before we got caught <laughs> That would be more my thing. <laughs> How long can we keep doing this? Before we get and then, and then we have a magic, a magic button that put us back into time. And <laughs> okay, well, let me ask you this. So, one of the things that they do with the technology uh, when um, um, Yellowstone is erupting, um, they choose to go back to the college and try to save as many people as possible. Yeah. Would you have done that? Absolutely. Yes. I don't think more of my yeah. conscience wouldn't not let me. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to sleep at night. No. No, I agree. I didn't. I, I didn't, didn't try. try. Right? Like, yeah. At least they tried to get as many as they could across. And I love the cops that they introduced to. Well, I thought I was retired, but I guess I'm going to work on this for a little longer. Yeah. <laughs> I was surprised at how like willing they were or the people just accepted it. I mean, I guess, yeah, it was right in front of them, but like, mm -hmm. you know, think if you're in that situation and yeah, the volcano erupted, but nothing started happening yet. Do well, they really think, you know, that this is going to end the world? I don't know. And you know, like that people were just so willing to accept her explanation. But they do, they do discuss that a little bit in the book where they talk about, um, they, they talk about the, uh, you know, the, everybody's kind of like the, the two security guards, I think, are having a conversation with the, the gate owners. And they're like, you know, everybody's all upbeat right now. They think they're going on a hike and that they're going to go back to their home, family yeah. tomorrow. We need to start preparing them for, you know, what's worse. Yeah. So. Yeah. And, and then it when also helped whenever they got there and opened up the gate. And she's like, Yellowstone has, you know, erupted. And then There's literally the that's when the, mm -hmm. the shockwave hits and like yes. freaking like not drops everyone to the ground. So, yeah. um, but I am like you, I, I think th it does say there were some people that kind of looked at it and were like, nah, I'm not going to do this and, and kind of wandered off. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe it's just the novelty of the thing. I mean, 
the idea that all of a sudden, hey, the, the fucking Yellowstone is exploding and this may be the end of the world and all of a sudden this is an escape, it's kind of like, well, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do this. I mean, why not? So, yeah. Well, then, but then uh, the other thing I, I – I, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say the other thing that I thought was a little – I would have questioned more is um, that uh, they all seem to just kind of ex- – Except that they weren't going to see their families or possibly never see them again. They, they kind of talked about it a little, but it was kind of glazed over that everybody and everything they ever knew was essentially like, you know, mm-hmm. indefinitely cut off from them. That was a little weird to me because to yeah, me, that's the first thing I think, what about my family? You know, I think they were all in shell shock. And I, I don't think I think the second book is definitely going to have to. Explore uh, that. touch on yeah. that where it's like well you know wh- however long it you know it's been since the first one and it's like mm-hmm. well you know the, the mood is definitely taking a fucking nosedive because it's finally hit everyone you're not fucking going back yeah yeah, yeah. well and that's the other thing is i'm safe where i am i you know <clears throat> the world's already like i i know that this person you know wherever the the line is that family's gone and there's nothing i can do for them now or you know i can't reach out to them right now because it's just it's not possible Uh so i have to live for now until i can prove that they're gone or try and meet up with them another time right so they're just focusing and that was the other thing they did say as well they were trying to keep everybody busy Mm -hmm. uh with farming and with other things to try and keep uh keep the spirits up from and not thinking about those things what do you think the group did right, and what do you think the group did wrong? They shouldn't have left those stupid fuckers in Outland. No. Mm. Well, what would you? How would you have handled that? So, in the book, um, they're, they're, they decide that before Yellowstone goes up, they decide that they're going to uh, go to Outland and they're going to mine some of the same deposits that are gone on this side, mm-hmm. but are very plentiful there. So they start bringing in this gold, and they're pretty smart about it uh, except for they don't really know how to uh sell it and that ends up attracting the attention of these three thugs who show up to their place and i have to say the way they the way they tricked them was very well done yes but what ends up happening is they end up leaving these thugs um in a small shed in outland and basically tell them we're moving all of our stuff we will be back in like a week to come get you uh, here's some food. Here's some water. Here's a thing to use the, as the restroom. I suggest here's, you don't go outside. Here's your guns back. You're gonna yeah. need them if you go outside. Yeah, exactly. So. And <laughs> and what ends up happening is one of the guys immediately gets killed by some smilodons. The other guy, the other two guys, manage to survive long enough that they encounter the group after Yellowstone's gone up. And then there's a, a much larger group, and that's where they run into the. Um, the situation we talked about at the begin, you know, near the beginning of the show with Monica. Um, how would you have handled that though? Would you have left them there? Would you have killed them? I don't know, but you can tell the, that part where they are the mining for gold part and trying to figure out how they they did that showed their age. Yeah, because they really didn't know what they were doing, and they were so. I think they got a little intoxicated with how much the money potential. was there, the yeah. potential. Because yeah. Monica, was it Monica and Bill or Monica? Monica and Bill were just racking up yeah. the bills oh, yeah. because they yeah. were just thinking, oh, well, we have an endless supply of money now. Yeah. So, so they, that. They wouldn't got a Cessna. <laughs> yeah. So that's how you can tell that they're very young and they haven't <clears throat> really been out in the real world yet because they have, they haven't had any real responsibilities are just looking at, oh, shit, well, I can buy whatever the fuck I want now. Um, and yeah, but, I would say that was one of their mistakes. Was yes, the that way was they a mistake. The gold. Yeah, yeah, that really they, showed their They could have been more careful. Yeah, the, yeah and they talked like about said, that. she said, they could have smelted it or something exactly. first. I don't know. Yeah. 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 But um, see, I'll be honest with you. If I suddenly found a bunch of gold, I... I wouldn't, I mean, I would think I would be smart yeah. enough to go, okay, what's going to be the best way to... They were at least smart enough to figure out uh, how much they could take in without yeah. it, like triggering reports or whatever. Uh, but it's well, one of those did, things yeah. that I have, a, I have a bad feeling. I probably would have fallen into the same thing. I would have been like, all right, well, this is, this well, is how yeah. you get rid of gold. And they're yep. all 21 yeah. years old. Of course, when you're 21, right. And it's just you, you have to worry about, and you've been in college and school your whole life and you haven't had to think about yeah. adult things. It'd be like, yeah, this, 
it would make sense to me too at the time. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. It's logical. I mean, it went the way they went about it. I'm like, that's really well thought out. But you know, they're they're kids. Yeah. So. As for what I would have done with the thugs, uh, <laughs> I probably would have. I probably would have tried to figure out how to use the portal to transport them into like a jail cell or something like that. Yeah. I don't think I would have left them in Outland. I wouldn't have left them in Outland. No. I th- and I probably, I probably would have got the cops involved because we haven't broken any laws yet. They can ask where we got the gold. And it was like, listen, we just found it. And, you know, then that might raise some questions. But by the time they start asking those questions, you've you already moved all your stuff and, and you're out of that area anyway. So, and you're, you're over on Outland anyway. Uh, as so, and then the other part is, what are you going to believe me? Like the cops actually going to believe you that, you know, we, we moved you off to this other area or whatever. Like, no, I, <laughs> so. Hindsight being 2020, granted, they, it was kind of a rash decision to put them in the, the little uh, shed, yeah. which mm-hmm. I'm like, it, had they put them in a better shed, it would have worked out. But mm-hmm. the shed they had was pretty flimsy. Yeah. Um, they had them unarmed. I'm kind of like you. At that point, maybe they should have just been like, all right, listen, we're going to tie you up at this point. We're going to bring you back over. And we're yeah. going to turn you over to the police. Yeah. And, you know, yep. we're going to bug out after that because yeah. – what are you going to do? You're going to tell them you went in a time machine? You know, a bunch yeah. of college yeah. kids tricked you and you went back in a time machine? Yeah. No one's going to fucking believe you. Yeah. Nobody's going to believe no, you. No, nobody's going to believe you. Yeah. And so. technically, they were the only ones committing a crime that they could prove. They were breaking exactly. into their and Bill had house, the video so. of them, right? Mm-hmm. Breaking into their stuff. And mm-hmm. so they could have just called the cops and said, we caught these guys. Here's the video. Here's all this. Yeah. And then, then they were like, oh, well, they had gold. And they're like, they were here for our, our equipment. And you can tell that that's yeah, what we're they were preppers, looking. you know? Yeah. Uh-huh. We're just trying to, you know, so I think that would have been a better way of dealing with it. But it wouldn't have made the story interesting. So. No. <laughs> true. <laughs> Very true. Um, I mean, we would have still had Adam, but he wouldn't have had his opportunity to pounce like he did. So mm-hmm. uh, because literally right after they deal with the two, uh, the, the two leftover thugs, uh, there's a small minority in the group that, des- that decides that they're going to be in charge just because. Yeah. Um, and you know, which you goes absolutely to show you, there's Go on. always assholes in oh, every yeah. situation. That's exactly we what I was going to say. Know some, but we I all know people who would do that. I in a group of 300. I love that there's that huge group, and they're like, "How do we know that you didn't cause Yellowstone to blow?" How do we know that you didn't do it? <laughs> yes. There's, and that's the thing you're, you know, the, the LART, you want to save as many people as possible, mm-hmm. but you know, that's going to be a mixed group. Like unless you screen them, it's going to be a mixed group. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and they didn't have enough time. There's no that. time for screening. No, it's no get the hell betting. through. Let's go. Yeah. Yep. We gotta go now. Um, I don't recognize your right. <laughs> How would hey, you have gone? <laughs> how would you have na- uh contacted the national guard or would you uh yeah i think i would have because they have a lot of resources and a lot of tactical experience in logistics and situations and yeah they're well, socially I, trained people yeah i, I like group. what yeah i like what bill did right like he's like hey i've got nothing you're not going to shoot me because i've done nothing wrong and so they take him back and mm-hmm. Thankfully, the other group figured out to to follow them and figure out where he was and everything. And mm-hmm. he knew he was safe and he knew everything was going to be fine. So because he knew that the other group could have gotten him out at any time. So I liked I liked how they did that because I probably would have done something similar. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. yeah. And then knowing that you're saving, was it an 80, 80 extra people or something yeah, like that? Yeah, that, that was the other part of it, right? Like here's this group of humans that are just trying to survive as and well. And they're going to die. And it's they're going to die. Whether yeah. So, yeah, c- hey, listen, you're not going to believe me, but here's the story. <laughs> and, exactly. uh, and I can't prove it to you right now, but I will be able to prove it to you. So put me in my cell and uh, that's fine. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, I think I would have done the same for those reasons as well as they kind of knew they were getting to their limit of what they were able to do mm-hmm. on their own. Yeah. And they kind of welcomed that extra, um, not only like expertise, but just authority. Yeah. Adult <laughs> yeah, presence, yeah. I think. Yeah. 
Um, and especially being military, these are folks who are very organized, task you know oriented. Um, they know they're trained to deal with stuff like this, to deal with crises. And yeah. thank yeah. goodness they agreed to help them take down those insurrectionists because that could have gotten a lot worse otherwise. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's talk real quick, going back to how they use the gates. Um, so part of the problem that they're having with the National Guard is <clears throat> it's been weeks after uh, Yellowstone has uh, erupted, and they're going they're they're using their equipment uh, and their technology a pretty smart way. They're driving around in Outland. They have a pole cam. Uh, mm-hmm. version of the gate so they're able to check gps and look around and they find places like uh lowe's or home depot or walgreens or something like that something that hasn't completely collapsed and instead of like jumping out they're literally moving the gate so it's just inside of mm-hmm. the building mm-hmm. and so they can walk out grab the stuff and literally walk it back in and you know from what it looks from what the national guard sees they see footprints that lead to nowhere and anytime they get to a building, it's cleaned out before they've ever gotten there. And they're trying to figure out how the hell this other group that they don't know about yet is doing this. Yeah. Um, is there anything overall you would have done differently? Um, I scavenging. Yeah. Okay. The, I, I don't know. I think I maybe would have been on more of a guard instead of assuming that nobody was around. I feel like they were a little bit, they were really hi- hyper focused on finding the um, the products that they needed. That I feel like maybe the lookout wasn't. Yeah, was... but I that's that's you're so focused on that. Oh no, I know that's what I mean. Yeah. That they were so hyper focused on finding on finding the stuff that they needed that they I don't think their mind was on. Well, shit. What if some? What if there's a group here that yeah. is trying to survive too? But that's that's because I know the ending of the book. Yeah. That's why I can say that. Yeah. Uh, honestly, I don't think there would be anything different. That I, I, I can't think of a of anything other than the, the the goons. That's the only thing that I would have dealt with differently. The only thing I can think of is, um, they. I mean, I understand being they were rushed for time. They were you know against the clock for buildings yeah. you know collapsing and stuff. Uh, so I I understand that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I really, once again, kind of a hindsight twenty twenty thing. I think they should have focused more on finding additional vehicles earlier because I think it would have helped out in the long run. Mm-hmm. Like and they do kind of say that. The They're purpose. like, okay, yeah. the, our bottleneck right now is the fact that we can get this stuff. We can't get it back to, yeah. you know, um, I'm, I, I'm rereading the, the yeah. Bob Verse books. Not Camelot. What did they call it? Um uh, from the Lord of the Rings, Rivendell. Rivendell. Yeah, they yeah. couldn't get they couldn't get their stuff back to Rivendell. So, yeah. great name for their absolutely. Yes, by the way, absolutely. Um, all right. So, last question I have for y'all. Um, what, now, granted, uh, I, I guess think I, you, if you can think if you want to think about this as if you were a college student, if you want to think about this now, you want to think about it both ways. Would you have survived knowing the world was going to hell and most everyone was going to die? Would you have survived? Would you have survived? Because there's a a lot of studies, a lot of information out there that shows that, like, in extremely dire situations, people will literally just go to sleep and never wake up. Like, they just have given up the Mm -hmm. um, will to live. Um. I think college me. Uh huh. If I had you with me, yeah, I would be okay. I yeah. would be able to make it through, knowing that my family was essentially gone. Um, as long as I had you. If I didn't have you and I had nobody else, I might be one of those people that just sort of curled up into a ball and sort of stayed that way yeah. and didn't wake up. I trudge on. Yeah. I, yeah. I would trudge on and just keep going. I would try. Oh, I know you would. Yeah. But I would be devastated. Yeah. yeah. You'd be devastated. If I, I would were... be devastated. Absolutely. <gasps> but I would, I would, I would feel like I had to be alive to, Aww. you know, to. Yeah. Now though, as long as I had you and the kids, I'd be okay. But if I didn't, then yeah, it would be really hard. So, and again, I would, I would feel like I'd have to keep going for you guys at that point. I don't know. It's weird. You couldn't live without me. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, this is getting awkward. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you, Ray. I'm one of those people that I think I just, I naturally would have to, I, I would find something to keep me going. If it was the thought of, it depends on like, you know, I'm hell, I'm no more than, I, I, I work across town. I live right here, you know, you know, with the family or whatever. It's not like, it would be one of those things that I, it'd be really hard to find a situation where I'm not with Christy and the kids. But if I wasn't, at least the thing that would keep me going for a while would be trying to find out 100%. Yep. And I have a feeling along the way, I would find additional things to keep me going. Like, well, now this family is kind of needs help. And, you know. And that's that's what I think it is. Like, so I, I've said it before. Uh, my My mom is a nurse. My dad's a cop. And so I was always raised in this, you help others type of thing. So yeah, that would be my immediate go-to is I need to help as many people as I can. And let's, let's go and do this. Oh yeah. You'd go in a full blown crisis management yeah. mode. Yeah. Yeah. I would have <laughs> that a couple oh, times. God. How many times we've pulled over on the side of the road because somebody's stuck in a ditch because he's helping them. My favorite was the fire or the uh, the, the car that was on fire. The transport truck. Yeah. Oh yeah, in the middle what? of town. Yeah, there was a car on fire, and the transport truck was, was driving at by. Night and, anyway, and, it was anyway, yeah. long story. He was directing the traffic. <laughs> well, you know, as that happens for everyone. Yeah, yeah you know, life. <laughs> I would have a lot of survivor guilt. I think that's what would. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would. I would try. I have a huge instinct, like will to live, but. Survive like survivor guilt and mom guilt combine that. Oh God, <laughs> it's oh. tough. It it would be tough. Yes. Oh yeah. You have to focus on the fact at least I saved these people. But yes. knowing that you can't save everyone would be tough. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I'd probably like take it out on some plants and rip crap apart and throw <laughs> shit. Uh, why the plants? Because some because. <laughs> I gotta something's got to hurt. Something's got to. Something's got to die. I have to. I have to. She have goes, a pillow I'm, or something. Like, she hit a wall. and my over her head. And she, I know. <laughs> I'd be angry. Yeah. Some, yeah she's out there just punching this woolly mammoth that's just looking down there, like, "What's what's up with you?" Damn yeah. you! I'd be screaming and crying, and then I'd probably feel a little bit better after. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Jen? Um. So I actually think about uh, this a lot, like if the world ended or if everything went to hell, because when you watch a lot of sci-fi movies and (laughs) read the books, like you kind of think that, like, what would I do in that situation? You know, like if if electricity stopped working and and society just stopped functioning and I don't think that I have like the greatest skill set to deal with a lot of that stuff. And I'm definitely not like confrontational or you know, out there looking for blood like Monica was, but like, (laughs) I think I would, I would definitely try my best to make it and help people like you guys said, and, um, look for my family and people I know, you know, even if like the, you know, vehicles don't work or I can't get through it conventionally, I try to be resourceful and bring people together. Cause I do think even though I'm not necessarily like a prepper or a, you know, a survivalist, I have some skills that could help in the wilderness and maybe help other people because I, for some reason people tend to follow me in situations. So maybe that would translate to something like this. Yeah. I would definitely be more in Bill's camp of, all right, let's see what we can get technology wise going or keep going or, um, society. Yeah. yeah. And that, and that's one of the things, and that's one of the things I do like about the book is that, <clears throat> you know, it definitely goes through stages. It's, it's, Hey, we need to prep for how we're going to get this gold over. All right. We need to prep for doing this on a bigger scale. And then when the shit hits the fan, it's like, okay, we need to, we need to figure out what we can do to get these people safe. All right. Now, how do we feed and shelter them? Okay. <laughs> now we got to figure this out for a while. Now we have to figure this out for possibly indefinitely. And like literally one of the things that was running through the back of my mind was, and I wonder if he's going to address it. I do not know this number. Um, but like, seriously, I would be like figuring out 
is there a big enough genetic gene pool right now that like people yeah. are still going to be able to pair off like they want to, or are we seriously going to have to start? Yeah. Sorry, ladies, everyone's got to produce two kids from multiple guys. If we're going to have a big enough gene pool to keep the human, human race going. And yeah. it's like, that's the type of things. And I'm like, I wonder if he's going to address that in this book. Are we going to find more, you know, when we get subsequent books, are we going to find more groups? Are we going to, because mm-hmm. I'm sure, you know, they keep talking about there are certain states that have, um, you know, have like, you know, basically, you know, someone took over mm-hmm. and basically declared their own little fiefdom. I'm sure in the next books, we're going to run into some of those folks. Um, but yeah, that's the type of thing. Like when it's, once it got going in my brain, I'm just like, yeah, we got to start thinking about how we're going to keep the human population going. Uh, I like the stuff that Bill's doing, talking about, hey, we've got to get, you know, long-term planning for electricity and, you know what I'm saying? So I, that's another reason I do really like this book is because it it does tackle some of those things. Mm-hmm. And you have to stop and think, oh, shit, like if I had to plan to keep the human race going, man, that's a lot of, that's a <laughs> lot of stuff. Pressure. Yeah, no, yeah. no pressure. No pressure. Yeah, I thought that when they took two or three hundred people, they mentioned how many they took, and I was like, "So if they did have to rebuild humanity, is that enough people to do it?" it you and know, see, it's a lot know better than is. a handful. Yeah. But yeah, it's scary because they don't talk about, you know, the diversity. The good thing I was thinking is, well, most of them are young. Mm-hmm. But when you're in that situation, sometimes you've got to like make those hard decisions about like, well, you know, you may not find someone you love, but you got to do your part and just get at it. Yeah. <laughs> like and, and I mean, they talk about, there were, uh, there were a couple, they said that there are a couple young ladies that are pregnant and they're like, pregnant, is yeah. this going to become an issue? And they're like, yeah, not right now, but in eight months, yeah, this is going to be a, yeah. a freaking deal. Yeah, and they bring yeah. up the fact, you know, we're not going to have the what 0.8 percentile, you know, like it's mortality rate. Shit's yeah. going to be rough. Like, yeah. This is yeah. not going to be an easy time. Yeah. They have so the knowledge. I'm, they don't have the equipment to do yeah. all the things they need to do. Yeah. But I also like that they said that we have to keep the knowledge that we have, right? So how yes. do we... That was, that's one of the other things that crossed my mind. Yeah. So there's knowledge that we have. That how do we keep this within our right within our group moving forward? And So like Bill and, Bill and um, um, uh, Matt know how to build the gates and you've got... Um, uh, Richard and Kevin that know the science behind the gates, y'all need to start teaching people. Like, because yeah. Yeah. if we lose y'all, then y'all are fucked. Yeah. yeah. Well, the other so. thing I think is neat to think about, not neat, that's not the right word. Interesting to think about in these situations is, I mean, you've got these guys who are specialized in these specific things, but think about how many other specialties in the world that we've developed over thousands of years are lost and they'll have to either rediscover or nope. Yep. They'll just, just it'll yeah. just be gone. Yeah, like they mentioned dentistry. Like they don't have oh, a yeah. dentist. Um, they have a, a someone going through med school, but what about all the medical specialties, you know, that are out there? What about mechanics and plumbers and you know, there's just like so many things it's mind boggling. Are they gonna reteach themselves or are people just gonna rediscover it as society advances if they yep. never Go Not back number one on the list, but I definitely think it should have been pretty high on the list. Is they should have gone to the university uh, library yeah. and just started yeah. chunking books through, like anything oh, yeah. in the reference section, just chunk that shit yep. through, and hold on to that because, like, that's that's a really good point, Jennifer. That's a lot of information that specialized information that doesn't need to get lost. So, but at least they had the foresight to get the animals and seeds and stuff, yep. which yeah. I probably wouldn't have thought of that in that moment you know yeah no i don't think i would have either well and that was one of the other things i did like about the book is when they started bringing people over that okay so his his writing is very much and and, and i'm gonna rope in the the bible verse books here as well um it's not there's there are a couple of people who are kind of leading things but this is very much democratic this is very much and because when they start when they go to the university <laughs> It, they didn't think about that shit. And they even said it. I didn't even think about that. It was one yep. of the ag students that's like, hey, what about the animals? Can, animals we, yeah. can we bring yeah. them over? We kind of need them. And they're like, oh, shit. Yeah, let's yep. figure that out. So, mm-hmm. And they even discussed, well, what about the pigs? You know, well, they'll become feral, but uh, you know, that's not so bad. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I, but go on. Going back to something you said, Eugene, uh, about them... 
I think you said something about them making plans and preparing for the worst case scenario. That's one thing I was like thinking, wow, thank God um, Bill and Monica were as like extreme and anal as they were, because Mm -hmm. had they not thought through every possible scenario of, okay, let's hide these guns. Let's have an extra gate. Let's put rocks in the, the gun, you know, Cases. Totally like, wouldn't. I would have not have thought that. Yeah, like they got so in depth, and they had like several scenarios played out. Like this could happen, so we need to be ready for this. And it was just really impressive that they, you know, like they said, we thought you were being over paranoid, but it turns out maybe it wasn't yep. enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so, so let me bring this up real quick. So you specifically brought those two up. Um, do we think? Totally gonna, yeah. Do we think Monica and Bill are going to get together, or do we think Monica and the strong-headed female that's in the um, German. National Guard, Guard. Yeah. Is, is are going to hook up? I think because there's a little bit of Columbia. conversation about that. Yeah, a little bit of both. <laughs> I think uh, I think Monica may be intrigued, but uh, I think she's going to butt her head a little too much. Yeah, with, they're too alike. That's what I was thinking. Okay, I'll be honest with you. I kind of saw myself as Bill in this situation, and he definitely has the hots for Monica. And like I said, I kind of have a book crush on her anyway. So I'll be honest, I'm definitely rooting for Bill. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, uh, I know that they mentioned at some point that, okay, that's probably not going to happen. But I, I could see that being rekindled in the second book. And well, no, I, they said they said specifically because he thought maybe something was going to happen between Monica and Richard. And they're like, and that's... Yeah. That's yeah. not going to happen. No, they've already got someone set up for Richards. Yeah. This it's the blonde that got kidnapped. Yeah, that yeah. got saved by Monica. So yeah, yeah. I, I kind of thought throughout the book that Bill and Monica were going to happen because just the way they were flirting and talking to each other, and they just had like really good rapport, and <laughs> they're on the same wavelength about everything. You know, it's like yes, come on, he, just kiss already. Well, and she, yeah, he he fell in love. Like he, yeah. I think I found my soulmate. Like who is yeah. <laughs> he? Says yeah. that. So yeah. Yeah. So, well, is there anything else in particular that stood out in the book that you really liked or didn't like or want to see? Or there, there was one scene again that you guys were reminding me of that I want to see on the screen of some sort, and that's uh, when they ha- when they're kind of looking at each other. They're, I can't remember who it was. There was two characters. They were looking at each other. They're like, "This is really surreal. We've got people on horseback. Oh yeah, <laughs> got people on dirt bikes. Yeah. We got people walking around with guns." Like this is, but Who is and the then there's a bunch. Of, yeah, maybe, but yeah, and then and then we've got people just doing camp out. Like this is fucked up. <laughs> yeah, and the <laughs> planes going it, by. And then yeah, it's yes, just like going <laughs> with with uh, carrier pigeons everywhere. <laughs> Passenger pigeons. Passenger pigeons. And that was the other thing too. I loved that they gave a warning shot, and then oh <laughs> yes. <laughs> There, there are so many birds, you literally just can't shoot a gun up in the air without killing something. Yeah. Like, it's that much. But, I mean, that Why? would be crazy in itself, just seeing that many animals at any yeah. given time. We yeah. think of the yeah. air quality would be so different. Oh, and yeah. The, yeah. It would be loud, too. Like, it wouldn't. I remember I went on a. Oh, yeah. I went on a class trip to Belize, and we were in the middle of the jungle at this eco resort. And it was so loud all you want to do is just scream out the window to shut up because and they, they talk do about that they do it and one guy does it the first night because, there yeah because they're just so loud and the freaking tapirs at 5 30 in the morning the it's just like, i just go to sleep i don't <laughs> yeah they were like it was loud very very loud and dark yeah and that's the other thing they mentioned as well is how dark, dark. it was so yeah yeah i have a a thought that i had throughout the book um so, I mean, it's an interest. It's interesting, you know, to think about exploring prehistoric or, or post-historic, whatever, um, Earth without humans, but with all this wildlife. Um, but it kind of gets dark on Earth side um, when the volcano explodes, and pretty much immediately you see society around the world just breaking down. Mm-hmm. You know, the U.S sets off this chain reaction and i mean within a month or so um washington's fallen states are seceding militias are popping up um countries are at war throwing nukes at each other and people aren't exporting goods like literally the international economy is just fucked because of this one event and that you know 
got me thinking, is that really what would happen? Would it really go to hell that fast? What do y'all think? I mean, so I mean, I've heard that this is not the only, sorry, Ray, this is not the only place that I've heard we're what three days away from anarchy, something like that a week away from anarchy. Like most yeah, cities dude. have about three days worth of food. And then within about seven days, you're looking at anarchy or some shit like so, that. So there's, there's that, but the, I've also seen studies where if shit really hit the fan, humans are more apt to try and help each other out. And see, that's the other thing, because if you, and that is honestly, you know, I've had conversations with people. Do you think humans are naturally good or naturally evil? And the best, the best uh, reference I've ever had is, is we'll look at after any fucking earthquake or tsunami or hurricane or something like that. Like, People come out in droves to donate blood and to drive down and to try to fix stuff. And yeah, it doesn't. All, it's not always long lasting. Granted, I blame that somewhat on the media, but people tend to try to help each other out. Yeah, well, there are going to be some assholes that are really going to fuck shit up. But sure. But in those but, circumstances, those people have access to that's normal also true. life, and they're they're comfortable already. What happens if everyone is going through shit? Yep. You know, like no food, no roads, no electronics, whatever. I mean, that's the thing that changes it all, I think. is. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think it also depends on how quickly it were to happen. Like if we were to have, you know, like a, a violent takeover of the government, that would be something that would, you know, everyone else wouldn't be generally affected. Like it's – this is literally, you know, world-ending situation, you know. Yeah the volcano going off and literally it's like, well, yeah, y'all are all right right now, but next year y'all will probably be dead. Like that's, that's a little bit different situation. Like, yeah, it, it's different it's, when there's a disaster and when it's literally the fucking end of the world. Yeah. It seems to me that in like most of the stories we hear about like this, where society is upended, um, this seems to be the, uh, the author's take on what will happen, right? Like the power, you know, people started turning on each other and going fucking crazy and the world kind of got flipped upside down because of this thing. And, and every, a lot of books and movies do this. So I'm, that's, that's kind of what makes me stop and think like, is that what we would do? Is that our nature? Cause see, but, but that just makes good, got... good storytelling. That's all that is. That's right? true. So you can't have a story without conflict. Yeah. Where in life, you know, nobody, very few people try and seek out conflict like that. Yeah. So. Yeah. I just have a hard time believing that the people I pass by every day, if, if something like this happened within a month would be like angrily turning on each other and trying to like kill me in the street, uh, you know, if I'm just trying to like scavenge for food, that that's kind of what makes me stop and think, is everybody really this like close to being a psycho? And am I, would I react like that? If something like this happened, like I'd like to think not. Who who knows until you're in that situation? And unfortunately, yes. So let's hopefully not get in that situation. <laughs> of course, granted, we really can't do anything about Yellowstone. That's one of those things that's like, um, you know, we can we can try to help uh, curve, uh, you know, uh, climate change and and you know do what we can to you know uh get off the planet and everything but when it comes down to it if yellowstone's gonna blow yellowstone's gonna blow like yeah. there's we can't well, fucking do anything about that and that brings me to my next point which is this drew a lot of good parallels for the future we could be looking at if we don't get climate change under control now granted that's not a nuclear winter that's kind of the opposite of what the volcanoes can cause but it could the runaway greenhouse effect that they went to at the beginning. And yeah. it does, this is the stuff that keeps me up at night is, you know, are we going to be in that situation pretty soon in my lifetime or my kid's lifetime where um, they're having to like fight for everything and there's no like running water and electricity because society's collapsed because, you know, climate change. Cause, yeah. Cause, been, Cause humans haven't realized that we're all in this rock together and we got to figure our shit out. Exactly. <laughs> And see, I, I go at it as a route of, yeah, hey, it's it's almost 2020. Why the fuck are we still just on this planet? Yeah. Like, you know, I know we're for fuel. <laughs> yeah, we're getting further along, and it's great. We're making some really great steps here, especially within this last decade. But 
we've got to fucking get off this rock. <laughs> so not saying we can just burn it up and, and whatever. I'm just thinking we need humanity at least two places. Once again, going back to the Baba verse books because, and cause I'm rereading those right now. And like I said, you so know, am I. <laughs> uh, you know, it, it, the, the writing is very much, I, one of the other reasons I love both the Baba verse books and this book is like I said, because of the, um, the resource management aspect. I think a lot of people uh, overlook that mm-hmm. when it, comes to you know this uh, world ending scenario like in a lot of stuff but it's like there's a finite amount of stuff or there's the ability to get more stuff how do we plan on doing that that's best for not only myself but for this group that i'm i've you know in the, in this case in both of the books this group of people that i've kind of taken on to try to save so you know, it's a small group of humans in this book. It was literally the rest of humanity in the Bobaverse books. And then some other different, you know, some other alien races. So, yep. but, um, well, does anyone else have anything else they want to add or you good? I liked it. I recommend it to a friend. <laughs> <laughs> what yeah, do we think is going to happen next? <laughs> like I said, I really hope Bill and Monica end up together. Uh, I do hope that they bring up like you know some of these other things that we brought up about you know how are you going to keep civilization going mm-hmm. um and i really think unfortunately some of the conflict is going to come from meeting some of these radical groups that have mm-hmm. taken over i just don't know if that's i don't know if that's if that's like the overarching thing for maybe three or four books because they've got to get a good distance away from where they're at and right now they don't even have that that that's not even a possibility you know what i'm saying so yeah, they got to figure out how to how to move so that they can contact somebody that can help them even more. Right. Yeah. And, and yeah, that Cessna is great, but it's not going to get them across the ocean. So, no, <laughs> no. So hell it's I like, yeah, of, go on. Oh, I was going to say, I kind of, uh, worry a little, are they going to screw up the new world as much as we've screwed up this one? Or are they going to learn from the, you know, what we've done here and try to live in harmony with nature a little more and balance? Cause is it possible to restart, society and start growing the population and not encroach so much on the you know species that are there without killing them out again like we we've done before yeah that's that'd be an interesting thing to explore and see how that you know how far they get um well the bubbaverse talks about that too right where they they go after that bug right the the cupid's bug or whatever mm-hmm. and what what's the ecological impact about taking this bug out completely and they do discuss it so yeah. Bunnies. Alien bunnies. <laughs> that was for the vine. For the vine, right. <laughs> um, well, with that, uh, we have not decided on our next book. It's probably either going to be the Bobaverse books, or we may be reading uh, the newest book that just came out from Felicia Day. Uh, I'll have to talk to the group, figure out exactly which way we're going to go with that. So uh, as for right now, we don't have a book for next month. Um, what else have y'all been reading, or have y'all been reading anything else? <laughs> all reverse books I've been, I've been back into the Bob reverse <laughs> and then the authorities as well so <laughs> uh, Chris, I've been trying been re- oh, go oh, on Jen go I was just going to say I've been trying to get through ironically enough the sixth extinction <laughs> sort of goes with what we've been talking about um, but it's very slow going and it's interesting I just can't seem to read it It's it's a book about how humans are destroying the planet in real life not this theoretical right, thing yes so yeah it's really uplifting and great yeah it sounds like that's why that's my brand you know <laughs> what about you chris have you been reading uh, this? yeah so on my car ride to and from work i listened to the harry potter books so i'm on my fourth read through third for myself i think no fourth maybe fourth. fourth I can't remember. Go through. I'm on Chamber of Secrets right now because I literally will, like, I'll finish Deathly Hollows and then go right back to Philosopher's Stone. Like, I don't even skip a beat. And then at night, I'm reading my one of my favorite authors. Her name's Sherry Lynn Kenyon, and she writes uh, romance novels, but, like, paranormal supernatural <laughs> romance novels. And I'm reading the latest one in the Dark Hunter series called uh, Scat- Scatigan. Nope. Scat- no. Anyways. It's the latest one. It's like that thick. There's like 800 pages. God. And 
I is this your it. smut novels? This is my mom porn books that I <laughs> unabashedly yes, yes. supernatural talk. mom porn. I think it's there because it's a really great story, and you throw in a lot of Greek history and Romans, and there's Ant- Atlanteans, and like there's a lot of sex. And <laughs> Tell that he's thrilled. <laughs> he thinks it's funny that I read them. Because I'm really, I've read all of her Dark Hunter books, all of them. And she's got another one where it's out in space in an alternate universe. And then she's got another one about pirates. Oh, no. <laughs> I've read two of those already. <laughs> um, I've actually knocked out three three different books. Um I uh, I read uh, this one actually just jumped on my radar. There's a, a author I've been following. His name is Andrew Main. He's written a, a series of books, and the fourth one just came out. It's in the the Naturalist series. Uh, the first book is about a um, he's a, a scientist from uh, um, UT, and he's in, he's pulled in because the authorities think that maybe he killed a former student of his, but turns out he didn't. And uh, what he stumbles upon is um, he has a computer program that helps him, like, um, I'm trying to think of what it's called. But basically, it's a computer program that helps him find uh, patterns and stuff in nature. And he discovers that there is a serial killer that is uh, making all of his kills look like they're uh, animal attacks. And so people just reports it as an animal attack, and he's like, this is not an animal. This is a guy. And the authorities cannot see it because y'all are looking at this as being a bear or a mountain lion or something like that. And this is, this dude is fucking killing people and he's having to go through extreme things. Well, anyway, this is the fourth book in that series. It's really, really good. Uh, then the other two books that I read were, um, both Stephen King, the one he just came out with called the Institute. It was pretty good. Um, that's about this secret, building or whatever that's tapping these uh kids who have psychic powers uh that wasn't interesting how does he have so many books and so or so many story ideas i just don't understand how one I, brain can continue to produce well they're stories. not all they're not all hits because that the other one that i read um <laughs> Now, I'll be honest with you. I did not – I probably didn't give this book a completely fair shake, but I read Dreamcatcher, and Lewis – my friend Lewis recommended this movie to me a decade or so ago when it came out, and I thought it was one of the worst fucking movies I've ever seen. I thought it was stupid as hell. And I will say the book is better, but it's still definitely not my favorite Stephen King book. In fact, it may be my least favorite Stephen King book. Um I just didn't really care for it. I was like, no, I gave it a shot, but mm-mm. this <laughs> this is not this is not for me. So, um, if if you're reading the Natural series, book four came out, awesome. If you're in a Stephen King, read the Institute. It was a good book. Um, just don't do Dreamcatcher. Just stay away from it. Both the movie, the movie and the away. book. <laughs> they're redoing the movie. No, they're not. Really? No, Are they oh, seriously? That's Mr. No. It's Mr. Mr. No. Doom. No, Doctor Sleep. Doctor Sleep. Sleep. Thank you. Now that I am interested in seeing because I did enjoy the book on that one. So, but. alrighty then. Um, let's see here. Uh, as always, if you would please give us a five star rating on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Music. Um, we're on Spotify. Um, what's the other one? I can't remember. We're we're everywhere. We Stitcher. <laughs> uh, we are on Stitcher. Um. But yeah, uh, go out there, give us a review. It does really help out. Um, recommend the show to someone that you know. Like if you know someone that reads a lot of um, geeky books, whether it be sci-fi, fantasy, um, you know, some particular authors that you know that uh, that you know you really like, or whatever, you know, uh, recommend the uh, recommend the show for uh, to them. So, um, and then of course you can find us at Epically Geeky on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and at epicallygeeky.com. We've also got a couple of other shows. We have the uh, Epically Geeky show. We should be recording one this Saturday night. Going to do a little Halloween stuff. Um, we have the Marginally Geeky show. Just had a. I'm sorry, Marginally. Uh, the Sustainably Geeky mm-hmm. show just had an episode come out like a week or so ago, and then um, the next one's already recorded, but it won't be out for a little bit. Uh, but apparently, that one's going to be really good. Mm-hmm. Yes, it's yeah. about hydroponics. Everyone's I know absolutely really nothing about, about that, that, so it's very interesting. Well, you will after listening to our show. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. 
And then we've started a fourth show, um, the uh, Procrastinators. That's me, Ray, and uh, and Cyrus, where we're going back and playing old video games that we just never got around to. Uh, so it, what was funny is Sean was joking about doing a, a, a movie show kind of like that. And I'm like, if you want to lead it, or no, actually, Jen was like, well, if you want to start it, go ahead. And I'm like, <laughs> Sure, why not? Yeah. <laughs> so, I'll watch the movies and talk about it. Yeah. Well, if, he's if sitting I had there the giving time, I you a hard time for not doing it. And I'm like, dude, do it your damn self. <laughs> That's what I did. That's what, you know, like, if you want it, do it. <laughs> Hell yeah. I want this show, so I'm going to make it. So. Okay, so uh, explain to me, procrastinators. Is it literally just recording you guys and your reactions? and? Like, no. literally, we played the Astro game playing? over... We played the game over a month and then just kind of what we thought of it. And the okay. la- so the first episode we did was, um, oh, my God, I'm blanking out on it. Uh, Kirby, Kirby All-Star on the Super Nintendo. Yeah. I never played that game. Uh, I don't think Ray did. And I think Sai maybe played it a little bit. And it's supposedly a really good game. So we all played it over this month. And then we got together and talked about what we liked about it, what we didn't. Um, but it was, I like that side did a little bit more research as to why you wouldn't have played it. Oh, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, so and, this is a discussion uh, show, yes. not like, yeah. I thought it was like recording you guys as you're playing your reaction. Oh, no, 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 no. Sai so. Sai will play the but game logistics. on his channel and, and he will have a discussion as he's playing his, his, his game. But no, we, we don't play it. Yeah. There's yeah. I like, I had to like, I sat down for an hour at a time, different times, and played it here and there. And yeah, yeah. there's no way I could. It was just kind of like, oh, hey, I have an hour to burn. Let's let's get some homework yeah. done. <laughs> so, <laughs> but yes, we do have a, a fourth show, and it is on all the feeds now. So you can you can go out and find the feed as well. Uh, speaking of which, uh, where can we find you online, Jennifer? I am on um, this show, of course, Sustainably Geeky, um, and Epically Geeky once in a while when I'm available <laughs> to be on that show uh and on facebook instagram and twitter at het's gonna be me ray where can we find you online so you can find me uh the reluctant yeti on instagram uh sometimes on twitter but not very much uh i never really did twitter so uh and then yeah <laughs> um and then obviously on the, the shows here too so and of course, you can find his uh, his Etsy store if you <laughs> if you want to go to epicallygeeky.com, click on Etsy, and you can find the link to it there. So hustle, yeah. man, hustle. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's the skateboards there. Uh, there there's some fun ones there, and then uh, I'm working on some other stuff that's going to be coming out. I just got to find time. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about it, brother. Uh, Chris, where can we find you online? You can find me here at Marginally Geeky. You can find me on Epically Geeky, Sustainably Geeky, uh, and roaming around Instagram looking at other people's photos. So if you want to look at them, <laughs> I haven't posted anything in like months. a lot. I'm a creeper. <laughs> totally cool with that. Um, my Instagram handle is Cedar Birch Cottage. Very nice. And as always, you can find me online at Optimus Gene on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. For everyone on the site, have a good night.